Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A Cup of Coffee, the show to go with your morning cup of coffee. I'm Omer, and while well, filming back with me is uh, my co-host, Aman. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. We're very excited to be here with our guest today, Vernon Edwards. Uh, Vernon, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Vernon Edwards, and I, too, have my cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm ready to roll. Awesome. Very exciting. Um, yeah, Omer and I are ready to go as well. And... Um, well, I guess uh, before we get started, do you give them a similar introduction um, to what I got? So Vernon works with my dad, which is how we know him. Um, and so um, Vernon, I don't know if you want to go with like an explanation of your career and how you got to where you are right now or just Ooh. what you're passionate about in general. Um, it's a story. Uh, so where do you want to begin? <laughs> uh, we can start. Uh, we can start at at and um, I started with AT and T in September of 1998. Long time ago, very, very, very long time ago. Um, and uh, I'm real passionate about um, groups being a part of groups that are successful. So. Uh, AT&T, it was Southwest of Bell at that time, ended up being a great place for me. Um, I've been a part of uh, some really good teams at at and uh, We did, uh, I remember, uh, pre-2000, uh, targeting a million DSL lines. I know that sounds crazy. Um, all the way through uh, when we created Uverse, uh, which was an uh, alternate way of looking at television. Uh, and uh, the TV stream all the way uh, to uh, my mother, Ma's dad, and uh, the TV data office. Uh, and yeah. uh, so, I've been a part of great teams. Um, uh, We've done some great things. Uh, it's been a beautiful, uh, beautiful 24 years to this point, uh, 23 and a half years, however you want to calculate it. But uh, overall, it's just, uh, uh, just a great time, great company to learn with. Um, accomplished a lot of things uh, as a team. So it was just a, just a real cool experience to meet a bunch of people from different backgrounds and to hang out. And, um, we should touch on some things. So that's kind of that's that's kind of what I did. Uh, what I did done over the past twenty two and a half years. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, it was like, I, thought, I thought it was really interesting how much you talked about being part of a team. Like, um, what in your opinion makes a good team? Uh, I tell you what. Um, a bunch of different people make a good team, man. I'm telling you, come on, I'm telling you, a bunch of good people. So, um, people have different, um, different strengths, different weaknesses, right? And when you kind of work together as a team, uh, you know, we can, uh, accentuate each other's strengths. Uh, we can cover for each other's weaknesses. Uh, and it is nothing like being uh, the joy you get from uh, being successful as a team, my original goal as a team. Um, I spent much of my career uh, in project management, program management, scrumming, uh, release training, engineer, uh, um, dev lead, uh, a bunch of different bunch of different things, but um, what you will find uh, is you can't do you can't do very much without the help of others. So, yeah. um, man, you can uh, accomplish some mon monumental things by uh, teaming up and getting some things accomplished. So that's just my thought. It's my thought. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's 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 really cool that you know you can find a like a group of people whose strengths and weaknesses um, 
like complement each other in such a way that once you get started working together and you get into a zone, um, I think it's something that's it's really difficult to accomplish sometimes getting into that zone with a, with a group of people. But when you do, there's like there's nothing that's more effective or more uh, interesting than just having uh, a group of people that are that are all you know focused on the same thing and working on the same thing. Um, because it unlocks different things that you can accomplish that you couldn't have done uh, as an individual before, um, you know, like starting a podcast or uh, being on any sort of team, right? Uh, so it takes, you know, a couple of people to get things done. So um, I think it's a really cool concept. I do. Um, so uh, aside from that, um, we love to ask our guests one major question, and I'm excited to ask this to you as well. Um, okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Look at me, I'm scared. <laughs> no, trust me, you'll love it. Um, It'll be fine. Yeah. So, yeah. What are you a huge nerd about? Um, I am a huge nerd about. Uh, kind of embarrassing. Uh, about uh, watching greatness. Really? I'm a huge nerd about, about watching greatness, right? So um, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it could be um, uh, some military general. Uh, it could be uh, some actor or actress that's really good at their craft. Uh, it could be soccer. Uh you know, it could be it could be anything. I'm addicted to watching greatness and learning about greatness, right? I'm addicted to um and accomplishing and it's kinda of, probably goes back to the other thing. And I'm a, and I'm so um uh a nerd about uh watching people accomplish great things together. Um that uh it's uh, it's just amazing. Um, I and among those is uh, Umar. I grew up. Uh, my uh, my parents. Uh, um, my dad played football. My mother's uh, father was a boxer. Uh, so I grew up in I grew up in sports, right? And it's probably uh, a lot of the things that make me love team so much. So I grew up in I grew up in sports and um there's nothing like seeing somebody that's great or seeing a team that's great, right? Because uh you know it's it takes a special kind of dedication not only from an individual but also from a team. Uh to be so great at something, right? To be so dedicated at something. Yeah. Um you know, uh, and I admire people that uh, engage and uh, identify what they would like to do at uh, young ages, right? Because uh, it could be anything. Uh, it could be podcasts, right? So yeah. y'all are young. Uh, you know, uh, I know you guys started your podcast a while ago, but guys like you guys, uh, who started your podcast at such a young age? Uh, five years from now, ten years from now, when you've experienced all those growing pains from being in the podcast and all the things you guys went through to get there. So when you end up being great and being podcast folks, right? Uh, it totally makes sense because you put in the work, you put in everything, y'all work together, y'all reach the goal yeah. together, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're really good at something, right? Yeah. And, and watching so many, and, and watching greatness is, uh, I mean, what else, what else should be better? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, Name somebody. Uh, I know this is y'all asking questions on the podcast, <laughs> but I'm asking questions. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> by all means. Guys, so, uh, come on. Name somebody that's really great in something. 
name a person that you watched and you like, God damn, that person's great. Um, yes, Messi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, because when you watch him, you're like, how does he do the ball? Like, yeah. If I use my hands, I couldn't do that. Right. He does it in his feet. Right. Yeah. And so when you watch it, so when you watch it, this guy, you like, it's like must watch television. Watch it. Mm-hmm. Every time Mason, uh, Mason comes on, you're like, ah, let me uh, change my schedule around. No, I can't do that. I got to be right here because I want to yeah. watch greatness. Yeah. Right? And so, right. it, like, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's few other things in life that, uh, that's more exciting than watching somebody that's great at whatever they do. Oh, yeah. Right. And so, uh, you know, that's mine. Yeah. What was you going to say, man? Oh, no, I was just going to say that it's super cool because you can see, like, they don't even have to to say it or to show you the entire process of how they got there. You can simply see from what they're doing right. that they put in the hours to get there. You know, it's something that's so incredible. Yes. You watch like yes. the greatest basketball players you watch. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be sports related. It could be like they're, they're musicians, artists that, 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 you know, in their craft are just so incredible at what they do. And you can see that they're so precise or so, you know, accurate at what they're doing. They're so quick and they pick up new things so quickly. And it's just like, man, I couldn't do that if I put in, you know, like, like I couldn't draw this painting if I tried for a couple hundred hours and they did it in like five hours, you know, and it's just, it's something that's just so incredible, um, you know, because they've reached a level that they physically can't reach without putting in that much time and that much effort. It's right, amazing, right? Yeah, right. I I got a um, uh, one of the architects I work with, right? And uh, you can ask your dad about this guy. This guy is relentless at his craft, right? And um, we've tried multiple times to peel him away from his computer, even while he's <laughs> off, even while he's on vacation. Uh, but he is so ingrained into uh, being great at what he does that it's, uh, you know, for somebody to be that singularly focused, especially, you know what I mean? Because whatever you want to accomplish in life, you have to be kind of that focused, right? You have to be that... uh, that's sick in the head, for lack of a better way of saying yeah. it. You actually have to be that sick in the head to be great in something, right? You have to be that singularly focused. That, and I just always admire people that can uh, can that can focus on something like that as a group or as a team or whatever. Yeah. I think uh, I've heard something that, so you talk about like, I like the way you put it, sick in the head. Because it's uh it's interesting um, to to talk about it like that. I've I've heard a, a interesting comparison or like an interesting way to to look at it, um, where someone said that you know motivation was BS because he considered motivation to be temporary. You get motivated about something, and then you know for a little while it lasts a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and then after a while it just kind of dies down. Like I mean, we're we're in the new year right now. We're in January, right? We're seeing that happen all around where people get motivated, quote, and then they get started on something and then it just kind of dies down. And so the way that he described it was you have to be obsessed about what you're doing, right? You have to be obsessed about your craft and you have to be so, like you said, you know, um, well, I, I can't believe I just forgot, but like not right in the head to, to just be so obsessed, sick in the head. Yeah. To just constantly be chasing this, this one thing and to be obsessed with it. And, uh, you know, that way you just keep doing that for, for so many hours until you have just become so great at it. Um, it's, it's interesting comparison because that way, like when, when it's all that you can think about, then that's when, when you get good at it. We're not just like motivated for a couple weeks 
and you just, you know, you get excited right. about it. Um, but then that ends up yeah. dying down. Like it has to be your life. Right. And you truly do have to be crazy yeah. in a way to make like your life about one thing, but it's, it's impressive. It takes a lot to do that. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it does. And I, um, so we always have an argument, right? On our team, right? And, and the argument is always uh, kind of uh, what, um, how can I put this? The argument is always, uh, and I, I, I'll take it with an easy example, I actually that is an example, right? And so somebody could say, Oh, I could work forever and never reach this person's uh, level of uh, uh, level of greatness and whatever it is, right? And so, uh, I don't know, Mom, you in the basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Mom, you in basketball? Okay, check this out. So, Steph Curry is a great example, right? Right. Steph Curry. Is six two on a good day. Yeah. Right. On a good day, this guy is six two. Right. And I'm sure people told him along the way that, oh man, you'll never be great. Oh, you just little. Oh, it'll never work out for you. Right? Yeah. But right. this guy became so singularly focused at being great at this particular thing that he was over he was able to over overcome what some people may seem as a, a challenge, not being as tall. Yeah. Or all these all these different things. So that's uh so you know, so we have an argument about that a lot of times, like what's uh What's you know what's passed down genetically regard uh, versus what you can do environmentally to be really good or great at something. So that's one of the arguments that that we have that we have all the time. Yeah. And one of the things among we we sitting there having this argument, and they say, okay, well, we'll burn. Uh, uh, because your dad played football, you were born to, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. were born to play football, so right. you're going to be good at football. No, no, <laughs> I really suck. Umar, I suck bad. Umar, I suck so bad that when uh, some of my dad's uh, coaches that coached him going up came to see me in middle school and they were like, uh, this kid, this but football might not be for this kid. This kid does not look like he can play football. <laughs> Looks like he will ever be able to play football. But um, I made a decision in my head sometime along the way. It was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to be good at this. I don't care if I got to stay in the weight room for, uh, for the rest of my life. I don't care. If I got to go out on the field and train every day for the rest of my life, this is what I want to be, right? And uh, I'm more in uh, I'm more in the camp of, uh, as you can probably tell, I'm more in the camp of, uh, I think you can do anything that you want to do if you're willing to sacrifice, uh, if you're willing to sacrifice and make that your highest priority. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, and um, so, oh, come on, your dad, uh, he burns wrong, burns wrong. So, <laughs> when he says burns wrong, yeah. I'll tell him. <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know. I'll, I'll tell him to watch the podcast episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> watch this, guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no man I, I get what you're saying and um i mean going back to what you said about i think it's interesting that some people consider like oh you know like your dad played football so that means that you were meant to play it it's you know it's passed down genetically things like that i mean like for one 
it invalidates all the all the work <laughs> that you put in to get there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm sure you feel yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you put in all those hours, and someone's telling you that like, oh, you were just born for it. It's you know, it's a lot deeper than that because you had to put in the time and the effort. And I think. Another thing about, you know, people saying that, oh, it's genetic. I mean, like being brown, I have so many people around me that are like, nah, man, brown people just aren't meant to get in shape. You know, we're not meant for this. And I'm like, to be honest, like we could, we're just making excuses right now. You know, like there's a lot of different things that people blame. <laughs> yeah. People are just blaming things a lot of the times on their, you know, like external factors so that they don't have to go out and put in the work right but i know for myself that like it's my fault that i'm not in shape right it's uh why there's there's a lot of things that are within your control um and and you know once you expand what you believe you can control and like minimize the things that you feel are out of your control a lot of things end up being perspective of course there are things in your life that aren't in your control but there's so much that is left to the perspective of am i going to say that you know like Hey, this friendship just isn't meant to work out or this relationship just isn't right. meant to work out or I'm not putting enough effort into this and I need to start doing more. Right. That perspective change changes that relationship or that, you know, whatever you're working on from being completely out of your control to you understanding that, hey, I have an influence on this and I need to work on it. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, I yes. think a lot of it is to perspective and, and props to you for understanding that and realizing that, you know, people, um, you know, despite what they may have said that you could have actually, you know, done that. And then you end up putting in the work. And, um, from what I can tell, I think you did pretty well in terms of football <laughs> from what I've heard. <laughs> so, um, uh, my dad would disagree. Right. My dad thinks he's better than this. Anyway, uh, I'm better than him too. Um, yeah. But um, that, um, but to me, I think that piece uh, expands in so many different parts of life, right? Uh, if you think of the pandemic, right? If you think of everything that we just went through uh, and, and still are going through from a pandemic perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you think of working and doing and doing all and doing all these things and um just from a societal perspective too right um to think that uh, no matter the obstacles <clears throat> that you couldn't succeed in something is ludicrous right yeah who cares if Umar has three obstacles and I have six obstacles? I don't care. I don't care. I want to be Umar. I don't care. I don't care. I just need to get through my six, six obstacles faster than he gets through his three. Yeah. Right? And, um, <laughs> and so, you know, I don't, um, I don't, uh, Believe that uh, your, our societal influences dictate how we're going to be going forward. Yeah, definitely. you control that. You, you control that narrative, and um, because uh, all the time it's so funny. Uh, every man be in for a kick. Among, I like to uh, talk to talk to people because. They think it's so weird that I played football and I've been in IT for 23 and a half years, right? They think it's just so weird. It's not weird. It's what I want to do. Yeah. Right? And if you understand things more conceptually, right? And you'd understand that people would understand that IT uh, folks move in teams uh, uh, to collectively uh accomplish a goal. Yeah. Right? How is that how is that different from football? Yeah. <laughs> More similar than you would think. Yeah, how is that how is that different? Right? Uh coach calls the play, right? My boss says this is what she wants from my outcome of a project. Right? 
Yeah. So it's, up, it's up to us to figure out how to accomplish that, right? Mm-hmm. Within the parameters of uh, 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 what's his given us, right? So, uh, for me, it's, it's really all the, it's, all the stuff is so much the same. Yeah. Right. And, uh, now, and, you know, I think, uh, the sooner, the sooner we figure that out, and it took me a long time to figure that out, right? Cause I'm in IT all this time and I'm like, oh, this, all this stuff makes sense. And then you go back and you look at it. It's the same as football. It's the same as soccer. It's the same as badminton and tennis. It's all the same. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. If you're in a team sport, um, you do the best that you can as an individual, right? Yeah. And then uh, you work with the selected members on your team, understand the team's strengths and weaknesses, right? And you go after that goal, right? Yeah. And you continue to... Uh, uh, adjust your approach as you go, right? It's nothing, it's just like uh, agile development, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you know, you just keep in the iteration, getting better and better and better mm-hmm. uh, and uh, until you deliver a product or service yeah. that your clients love. Yeah, just like in football, so, you keep practicing until and you get better. <laughs> you know? Well, what's hey. Yeah. It's it's very interesting. There's there certain things that you would associate with football that you wouldn't associate with IT, and there's certain things that you associate with IT that you wouldn't associate with football, but you don't realize that it applies to both, right? You would associate having a strong winning mentality to football, but you can also have that in IT, and that could also apply to your – you could attribute to your team's success, and you would associate, you know, like – accomplishing certain steps and you know like certain tasks and having a certain level of intelligence to be in it but people also don't realize the amount of intelligence and the amount of planning that goes into football and you know memorizing positions and plays and going through all these things i don't know how quarterbacks do what they do and you know calling plays and all of that there's so much depth yeah yeah Yeah. and so uh and so the fact that you see uh, a team or an individual that's really good at something, right? Mm-hmm. Then you understand, oh, hey, these people went back and they put in work. Uh, they bust their butts as individuals. And then they came back and bust their butt as a team, yeah. right? And all that. And uh, conflict is good, right? People yeah. are like, oh, no. Well, uh, uh, Amon and Umar, they, you know, they had an argument the other day. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's only going to, that's, that's only going to, the conflict is only going to make you better. Yeah. Right? Con- conflict <laughs> is used in the appropriate way. It's only, it's only going to make you better. It's sure. only going to make, uh, uh, make you more aware of what, your teammate is going to do at any given time, right? Because I know that right. more already kind of knows uh, what a man is going to, where he's going to move next, how he's going to move, how he's going to supplement his movement, yeah. right? Uh, where he's right. going to lead to next. Man, and uh, I can tell just by the way you guys passed the mic back and forth that you guys have been together for a while. Y'all comfortable with that? Uh, and uh, y'all look like y'all both happy. You off Monday, and we didn't have to do anything. Today. Yeah, so, <laughs> that attributes a little bit to the to the calm feeling. <laughs> and I have my coffee, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> what could be better? <laughs> yes. So, right. and yeah. that is the name of the podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, we love it. Um. Well. If you wouldn't mind talking a little bit more about your football background, um, because I know that's what Mm -hmm. what I'm super interested in and, um, you know, just how you got, uh, where you got as comfortable as, as your go, you are, um, with, you know, how far you can go in that story, just as comfortable as you are. But, um, yeah, if you could talk about that, you know, how you got, where you got and what you love about football. Uh, man, uh, I grew up, uh, in Houston, Texas. 
Um, my dad uh, was a fifth round draft pick for uh, the New York Giants in 1972, also the year I was born. Uh, my wow. dad back home in uh, Houston, Texas, in the area I grew up, like my dad is some kind of stud. Like, uh, they, they love him. He was uh, one of uh, the first folks from our high school uh, to go to the NFL. Uh, he was, uh, I don't know, he might have been a college All American. He, you know, he, if right. you listen to him, he was really good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, came back and, uh, after, the uh, after football and, uh, raised, um, by raising me, he also, uh, mentored a lot of the, uh, young high school football players that, that stayed, uh, that stayed around our neighborhood. And, uh, he, uh, would go on after he stopped playing football to become a police officer. So, um, to make a long story short, I wanted to be my dad, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the, I thought the guy was so cool, uh, and believe me, he'll never see this podcast. I'll make sure of that. Uh, <laughs> I really thought the guy was so cool. And uh, so I wanted to be my dad. And uh, as I grew up, I figured out uh, I'm Vernon. He's Larry. We're two different people, right? Um, but I could take certain things that my dad did really well and does really good and things that I admire. And uh, use those things going forward. So, wanted to be my dad. I grew up loving football. Uh, the first uh, playoff game I remember, I might have been four years old, and and I remember uh, what it felt to lose. Uh, what it, how it felt uh, to lose. I, I remember sitting there in my grandmother's house. Totally captivated by the game, um, growing up. And, uh, so the things I did growing up was, uh, study because my parents, uh, would choke me if I brought in anything less than an A. Wow. Uh, and, uh, football. And so that's all I did, man. That's all I did. All kinds of uh, football, basketball. I just love it. I love the competition of it. I knew, I knew that's what I wanted to do uh, when I saw it on television at four years ago. And so um, I followed in his footsteps. I went to the same high school. Um, I was blessed enough to get uh, uh, most of those scholarship offers in football and basketball. Uh, my mother kind of directed me, uh, forced me to go to Southern Methodist here in Dallas. Uh, great decision by her. I played no part in it. I just uh, I wanted to, I wanted to go to another Texas school. I was never been to that school because me and that school are not good friends. But um, anyway, I wanted to go to another Texas school, but I'm so glad my mother um, made me go to SMU. And uh, like I said, during that time, Umar, Umar uh, I determined that's what I, I wanted to do. So yeah. uh, when I got to when I got to when I got to college, I weighed 205 pounds. Uh, was an outside linebacker. Uh, by the time I left college, I was 265, 270 pounds because I just stayed in the weight room, much like a mom was speaking of. Um, and uh, made myself into the player. Uh, made myself into the player I wanted to be. And uh, going into my senior year, I was supposed to be uh, drafted in the top three rounds. Broke my fibula. Slid all the way down to the end of the draft and went undrafted to uh, San Diego, uh, Chargers at the time. And, and uh, 
was blessed enough to uh, make the team and fight my way for a position, and uh, I really thought that's what uh, that's what uh, my total career was going to be. Um, but uh, didn't work out that way. Uh, going into my third year, we got a new head coach, and uh, yeah, got released right before training camp, but. Great experience. Twenty-two years old in Southern California, uh, running around with uh, not my six foot three, two hundred and fifty pound dad breathing down my neck, checking to see what I'm doing every five minutes. I oh, man, I had a ball. Oh, man. I had a ball, and uh, I was able to uh, reach uh, reach my life on goal. Yeah, that sounds incredible. Just the experience of being in the NFL. And it's also the story, by the way, of uh, why we never root for the Chargers anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, we're against them. <laughs> yeah, after uh, hearing about all that, now I'm never rooting for the for the San Diego Chargers. But, man, that sounds, sounds incredible. Um, just, I mean, what are some of your favorite stories or times from when you were in San Diego, whether it's football related or not, just being there, being that experience, like you talked about the whole vibe? Um, how was it? Man, uh, many, so many stories. Um, I tell you about, I tell you about, uh, one or two cool stories. Like right? one, uh, one very cool story was the guy who was a superstar on our team was Junior Seau. Played middle linebacker. Uh, it was literally like going around with uh, I don't know what's the biggest superstar of the day. You know, traveling with uh, Aaron Donald. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like. We go places and people would just come out and be like, yeah, Julia. You know, it was crazy. And uh, I grew up uh, kind of, uh, Dewey's probably, I don't know, four or five years older than I, I, I am. Uh, and uh, so when I got to uh, San Diego, um, after my first year, I didn't really even think the guy knew my name, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, he like called me out of my name, like on purpose. Like, I'm like, this guy really sucks, right? And, uh, so one day we had an off day and, um, me, him and a couple, well, a couple of defensive linemen were going with Junior to, uh, to go to, uh, one of the beaches around San Diego and they drug me with them. And, uh, and I swear, this guy never called me by my right name. I would go in the huddle, and he would call me everything but my right name, right? <laughs> so, anyway, to make a long story short, I had broke this hand over here, so I got this big, long cast on. And for the first time, oh, yeah, I can't swim. Um, so, for the first time, I'm going uh, uh, water skiing. Oh, wow. I got this thing on, on my hand. And so... uh. I get out there, and they first were in the like the uh, little seating thing. So, you know, I'm a big, strong football player. So I'm on the back with uh, another big football player. And I'm like, I'm not hugging this guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not hugging this guy. Anyway, he goes out on the sea dude. I fall off the sea dude. I'm about to drown. Next thing I hear Junior, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. He comes and dives down and pulls me back to the, uh, you know, and pulls me to safety. And he's like, Burn, you need to be over there with my wife and all them. You can't come out on the, you can't come out in the sea with us in the before. You can't swim. You're going to drown. I can't believe you. And, uh, and I think that was the first time he called my name, called me by my, my name. The first time I think he really called me by my name was him saving my life. Like he's pulling me out of the sea. Wow. Uh, pulling me out of the sea. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's probably one of my uh, funniest and uh, greatest memories of uh, playing football. And um, 
I'm on, I got a couple cool sacks. I said John Elway. I saw cool. that. My dad actually sent me the video of the John Elway one. <laughs> and if you actually watch the video, I'm on. I make the sack. I called the fumble. And Junior gets all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I saw that. I was like, where's Vernon? Like, he called your name for a second, and the camera's just saw Junior because he just picked up the fumble. But you caused everything. And I was like, man, you're not giving credit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, give my football away to some needy kid. I'm yeah. Bad. I'm needy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no that was so cool i mean that's that's a pretty your your two truths and a lie whenever you're you know going into a meeting or something i mean, no one will believe you you can say like the two most normal things and then say i've sacked john elway and everyone's gonna think that's the lie for sure <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. it's uh it's it's so it's uh it's so funny, man. And I, it took me years. Uh, first of all, to get over being cut and not playing football, it took me years. Yeah, I don't right. Know. I didn't, you know, I didn't watch football. I had none of the memorabilia up in my house. Uh, you would have no clue that I played played football for. Uh, I had people I worked with for years. Uh, they had no clue I played football, and uh, because when you put so much into something, it hurts. Right? Yeah. It hurts. And, uh, uh, about four or five years ago, I finally came, and I don't know what it was, but so and I started digging through all the stuff and pulling stuff back out, and uh. And now I wish I had all the photos and all of the uh, things that, uh, you know, that I should have, photos yeah. and helmets and all those things. So I just started right. putting those things out uh, not too long ago. And so, Amon, that was the beautiful thing about the video clip that I shared with your dad was literally, I had never seen that clip until this Christmas. Wow. I literally never wow. watched that clip. And um, I had uh, one of my daughter's friends took an old photo um, that a, a buddy took uh, from YouTube when we were playing Texas a and The clip actually behind my head over here. Oh, wow. And, and, and so... Um, what I ended up doing was, uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to search YouTube for specific games and see if I can find another uh, uh, picture that I can take so I can have him recreate it and, you know, recreate another yeah. picture for me. And uh, I ran into, I ran into that, that, that football game and I sat there and watched it and i'm like it's like watching a whole different person you know what i mean like like what are you doing on that you could have made a better play yeah oh, burn. come on you know what i mean um, uh but it was um it was great i had never seen it i had never seen it i just remember one of my teammates who was hurt at the time a guy by the name of chris mims mm-hmm. uh, I remember him leaving a voicemail and calling me as soon as I got back to uh, the house because he kept calling me so I answered. He was like, man, I can't believe it. You got that sack? And they gave all the credit to Junior Say. <laughs> Junior gets all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I had never seen the, I had never seen the clip in the 25 wow. years later. And I'm like, Chris? You're so right, man. <laughs> oh my God. It's like I didn't like you. Man. That's uh, uh, great yeah. moment. Uh I've never felt that's one of those times when you have sixty five thousand people cheering and you know it's something that you did. Like they have the goosebumps go through your body. 
It's like I didn't sleep for 48 hours. It was crazy. Oh, adrenaline shouldn't go. Uh, yeah, yeah, adrenaline shouldn't work that way. But I didn't sleep for 48 hours. I was just so hyped after Wow. That. After seeing that. Man, I had to be a part of that. That you as you should have been <laughs> yeah um, that just sounds, sounds so, like an amazing rush but yeah, yeah. i was just uh, so i was just wondering uh the, what are some like the unique lessons uh you've learned that you feel like you only could have learned through playing football that you you know currently apply to your life now i umar i swear it's everything uh from uh from watching the person that goes before you and looking at and understanding their strengths and weaknesses and stealing piece of their uh, pieces of them to put into yourself, right? Mm-hmm. To make you better overall. Yeah. Uh, I learned that from football. Uh, I learned that uh, I could accomplish anything from football um, because uh, the percentage of people that go to the NFL are like some, it might be like 0.02% of high school football players and less than 0.8% of uh, College player. Uh, what I learned is if I had a if I have a goal and I'm willing to dedicate myself to it, I can do anything. Um, I learned that uh, everybody's not gonna like you right. from the beginning, right? But uh, I had a old coach that used to tell me all the time. He's like, "Fern." The bottom line is production. If you produce, nobody can take you off the field. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I use that uh, in my everyday life. Um, uh, probably the greatest lesson, uh, one of the greatest lessons I ever learned about race, I learned uh, through my head coach, Forrest Gregg. Uh, Amon, that's the name that you look up, Forrest Gregg. Right. Um, he was, he was, yeah, he was my uh, college coach, head coach at SMU. And uh, coming from a, uh, a all black environment, right? Uh, yeah. And I was really frustrated when I went to SMU, right? Um, totally different environment. Plus, these kids were really, really rich. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and the way he put it, man, he was like, uh, hey, Vern, life is not black or white. He's a sick guy. Life is green. He was like, life is green. The host like, life is green. And, uh, and from his perspective, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, you can, you can sit there and argue, uh, about black and white and everything else. This is what I took for uh, from it because I don't believe everything in life is about money. But what I do believe is everything is, in life is uh, you control your destiny. Nobody controls your destiny. You, if you put in the work, you could be successful. Uh, and race, color, none of that. None of that matter. Obstacles, none of that matter. And then on more from the top of all off, uh, learning to work with others, right? Because uh, some of my best, some of my do to God buddies, right? Uh, we have different racial makeup. But uh, when it came to uh, accomplishing a goal together, uh, it made it um, uh, it made us brothers for life, right? And 
it, it doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything, right? It, that that doesn't mean that. What it what it means is we have to work with each other to if we want to be successful as a team. And when you work with somebody and you success and, and uh, you understand that they love their kids, they love their mom, they love their all this stuff is the same. Yeah. Right? They all the the same. And um you know, that you can be successful. So I contribute I contribute uh, a majority of my life to sports, right? It's no different than um uh, want to be on the team, and you saying, okay, Amon's like, I want to be a wide receiver on the team, right? Me personally, I don't care. Long as I'm playing, I can play wide out, I can play DB, I play nose guard, I play left guard. It does not matter, right? And what I found in the business world, right, is if you take that same uh view, right? Uh, the same thing happens, right? Because who, uh, as you guys, uh, grow, like, who doesn't, what boss doesn't want somebody that can do a multitude of things, right? Yeah. What, uh, right. what client doesn't want somebody that can do all these kind of things, right? Yeah. And, um, I contribute all that to football and playing on teams the majority uh, of just about all my life is um, you can accomplish such and such great things and the hard work and uh, having faith that one day all the hard work is going to pay off right and all those things uh to me, I would say, uh, outside of God, you know, that's the foundation of, uh, of my life and how I personally, just my personal view, uh, how I approach things. So that's what I got from football, uh, or just sports in general. Omar, I know that was a long winded <laughs> explanation. Omar, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. It means it had a lot of depth and, yeah, I think people will enjoy hearing what you said. I love that explanation. So, um, so a lot of those things that we were just talking about as it relates to football, right? I think it relates to anything yeah. that uh, yeah. that you want to be good at, right? So, if you're part of a band, right, and you play the, the xylophone or whatever, yeah, right. Uh, uh, you're going to go through learning how to play with the saxophones and learning how to play with the flutes, right? Uh, yeah. You're going to practice by yourself, you know, so you can yeah. get better. Uh, uh, and so, and that's why I think all, all those things kind of go together. And all you got to do is figure out what the heck you love and to go for it. And I think all the things that we talked about in football will all come uh, as a part of anything that uh, anything that you want to accomplish. So that's you know. So to me, a lot of those um, life lessons that you get out of football or out of sports or whatever, it's it's the same whether. Uh, Somebody wants to be a developer, right? It's yeah. the same. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an engineer. It doesn't even make a difference. It's all the same. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, so that's, you know, so yeah. I don't know what you guys think, but that's kind of, that's well, kind of my opinion on that. Going into software engineering, I can fully agree with that because, you know, like you said, being good at one thing versus, you know, being able to do a couple of different things or, coach or boss will love you for that. And in software engineering, you know, they love the developer who can program the front end and they love one who can do the back end. but what's in the most demand right now, it's full stack web developers who can do both. Right. 
Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and one thing you don't realize a lot of the times going into something like engineering or um, just IT in general is the importance of being able to communicate and you start to learn that, okay, like I don't just have to understand the technical side. I also need to be able to communicate these things and, um, you know, understand project management and the entire, you know, like the whole, the whole nine yards. Right. Life cycle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to, to, to understand all of these different things, it's like they don't just want someone who's one dimensional. Right. You know, you get rejected. A lot of people get rejected from jobs because they're too one dimensional. And so being able to to adapt to different situations and take on you know multiple roles, it's um, it's huge in, in anything you do. That's why that's why I thought uh, that's why I thought you were going to do so well. And, 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 I'm, and me and your dad have a side bet going on. Anyway, but <laughs> oh, no, 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 go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know what this bet is. <laughs> we we promised we promised that we wouldn't tell you for another five years. So I can't five so I years. Can't <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I'm gonna have to set a reminder for 2027 <laughs> in, in January. Yeah, please, please. Because <laughs> here, here's here's what I here's what I think is the uh, biggest gap uh, from an engineering, a software engineering perspective, right? I think personally, the biggest gap is the communications between development and the client, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to take a complex concept, right? And to explain a complex concept to, uh, to people who may not be of engineering backgrounds. Yeah. Right. But the folks, I believe the folks that can live in both worlds yeah. will be the most successful going forward. Right. Because what you will realize is, first of all, I would say the business students, right or these B students, C, B, C students, right? Yeah. But what what they get along the way is those social skills that allow them to communicate, right? And they're uh, really good in social environments, yeah. right? Uh, uh, what I tend to see sometimes from a development perspective is uh, some social skills might be, uh, you know, lacking because they're so focused on uh, certain things, mm -hmm. right? And so the ability to communicate between those two uh, very different group of people, right? I believe will always uh, be uh, very important. And I think personally, and you can go do your research on this, the person that can talk to both is the person that's going to make the most money. Oh, yeah. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you talk about sales right. engineers yeah. and uh, you know solutions architects. But like that's that's basically what mm -hmm. what those roles are, and it was crazy. I was talking to one of my friends about it, and he was like, "Well, these guys are just talking about tech, and they're making you know like the, the salaries are are insane what they're making. But the reason they're making uh -huh. so much is not just you know because they know how to talk; it's because they can talk to both sides." of the spectrum and cool. say that, you know, this is okay. Like if, if we're talking to a developer, we can tell them exactly what needs to be made. And if we're talking to the client or, you know, whoever we're presenting this to, we can make it so simple that, that they can understand and be a part of the conversation. It basically bridges the gap between, you know, the developers and the technical side. And yeah, 
all these terms are still fresh in my head because I'm fresh out of so many job interviews. So this is all of it. Right. It's, it's great to let it out somewhere and just uh, yeah, no. <laughs> talk about it. Because <laughs> I, I, I think you got it, right? Because uh, your scrum masters, your release training engineers, uh, those people have to be able to articulate back to the business. And for and you can go look up you can go look up those roles and like you said, you know, uh your solutions architects and all those all those roles that uh communicate between the two groups, right? And um man, those people there, those people are the ones that rule the world, right? Yeah. Those are the people um, and I tell some of the kids I train in football all the time, I tell them, I'm like, man, if I was you guys, right? First thing I would be doing is, um, is, uh, going to get me uh, a technical degree and married it with a business degree, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, you guys, if you can do that, you'll rule the world. Every business nowadays, I don't care what business it is. It's still a tech business. Yeah. Right. No matter what. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Because if it's uh like I train football, right? But one of the coolest things that to me that happens uh, when I when I'm training football is I'm on your love list. Uh is all the tech I can wrap around them. Right, all these yeah. engineering practices that I can wrap around them. Right, I teach my kids in sprints. Wow. Right? <laughs> I, I, you know, I come out at the beginning. Uh, uh, like, for instance, we just got through the end of the football season for a lot of the high school and college kids. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. literally, I go through that film. Right. And for this particular program increment, right, I say, okay, I want you to work on this, 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 and this, right, at a, at a concept level, right? And literally, uh, I go back, uh, so I have my features, right? Mm -hmm. And I go back, I break them down in the user stories. Wow. Right. <laughs> Writing user and, stories for football practice. Uh, right. And literally uh work through work through that, right? And every um every six weeks, right? You know, and it's just like wow. coding test, coding test, coding test, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we go through we go through these individual workouts. Right. And then I test them. I pull some, if I got defensive linemen, I'm going to match them up against some offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. We're going to go pass rush. Yeah. Right. And we're going to see if you got better on those things that we identified you to get better on. Right. Wow. If you do, right, then we could enhance on what you learn. Right. Uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. and so, even and so and even having the ability right to film everything right and work with some of my IT friends right to measure the movements right uh, understand where they are from running the 40 running the 10 running the 20 right yeah. and and actually able to Build that out, put that in my database, right? Right. Yeah. I got my own because I got my own database. Oh man. Once in, <laughs> in the cloud. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> and so I, I got my own database, right? And so I can build out everything, right? And I can show you, right, incrementally how this person got better, right? right? And Go back and share that through Power BI. Oh right? man! <laughs> and Got so, all the IT okay, tools. This is how 
this is how my folks got each other. Right. Yeah. And so how is football not a tough business? It's it is. I mean, you can see it literally. There are teams that are using data like in the NFL. I mean, like the fact that you can do this to train your. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. You see those ads powered yes. by AWS for, you know, teams yes. using using this technology to, to figure out what they need to do better. I mean, there's big data in the right. NFL. <laughs> it's incredible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. Yes. You can. Like, like, where else? And so, and, and I say this like, uh, it's hard pressed, my belief, to beat me at teaching somebody football, right? If I have all those things in place that we just talked about, mm-hmm. uh, where I can drill down into those specific things that you need to work on. To make you a better overall, more complete player. Yeah. Right? Because here's the thing that's always tricky about data, right? You can have all the data in the world, but if they don't know what that data means, it means nothing. Yeah. It means nothing. So if if I wasn't an ex defense lineman, right? All the data points don't mean anything to me. Yeah. Right. But being an ex defensive lineman, oh, I know exactly what it means. Oh, I know how to uh how to get better at certain things to make you a better overall holistic player. Yeah. And and uh and so all oh, that's IT, baby. All <laughs> that's IT, all that's all that's engineering. Yeah. Right? It's so cool. engineering. And you could you know, try it in, foot, in football or whatever sport. It doesn't even matter. Anything in the world, really, at this point. Anything in the world. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You can't have a great business without having a great IT strategy. It won't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it yeah. won't work. So... <laughs> it's incredible. Um, so I think that's super cool that you've... I mean, we've gone from talking about um, how football applied to your IT, you know, like growth in IT and how IT's helped you now coach kids in football. And I think it's so interesting that it's all come full circle at this point. Um, And it's just it's so cool. So going from talking about, you know, like your dad's career to your career and then how different parts of your life have, have affected each other. I know you've given a lot of advice um, throughout this, but we always like to ask our guests for some closing advice before we uh, end off the podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm definitely excited to see what you have to say. So if there's anything um, that you think is important to leave the audience or just us with, um, what would you think it is before we close off? Um, my my thing is find something that you're passionate about and the work that you have to put in to be successful at that won't seem like work. Yeah. That's the only thing that's the only thing I can say. And uh, it doesn't matter what your passion is, it must be legal. But yeah. <laughs> outside of that, no, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter what your passion is. Because out of that passion, I believe her mom be the life lessons uh, that help us get better and understanding that we're never a finished product. Uh, we always have to continue to uh, iterate through life and just continuously get better. And uh, life is so beautiful. It has so many opportunities. Uh, find out what you want to be. Identify it and run to that. Uh, and run to that thought in your head. And uh, don't let anybody deter you. Uh, because believe me, nobody thought. Uh, nobody thought I'd play in the NFL. And I think it's probably even more people thought I wouldn't be an IT. So, uh, how about that? But, uh, but that would be my, 
that would be my advice, and that's what I that's what I want to like is uh is just that find your passion, whatever you're passionate about, just run to it, and uh, all those life lessons will come out of uh, the sacrifices and things that you do, and always uh, the other piece is God and family first. That's all yeah. I have. Tomorrow. That's all I had. I love Thanks it. Thank, yeah. you. thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, well, thank you so much for me for joining us today. And uh, as always, thank you uh, to the audience for listening to us. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at a cup of coffee pod, or email us at a cup of coffee pod at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or would like to be on the podcast, just write to me, just there. Yeah. And watch my dad. <laughs> watch my dad. You gotta watch my dad. Y'all be good. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah.